Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. How you all doing? Happy Friday. Hope everyone is doing phenomenal. Let's dig in. Any live questions, feel free and chime in. Look forward to having a great chat here today. All right, we're live on Facebook and live on YouTube here as well. If you're enjoying these chats, make sure you give us a share. Make sure when you subscribe, you hit the bell. That allows us to give you notifications when we go live or when we're putting up new content or podcasts or videos. So I really appreciate it. All right, what's cooking in the world of functional medicine today? Natural health, natural medicine, what's going on? So let me just kind of maybe talk to you about, oh, let's see here. Neil writes in, congrats on passing 45,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much. If someone could take one general supplement for parasites, what would you recommend? So if you were looking to just take like a broad spectrum, like parasite support in my line, it would be the GI Clear 4. Now the GI Clear 4 has a high dose of berberines, okay? Uh, Golden Seal, Barberry, Berberine HCL. It's got a very high dose of black walnut as well. It also has burdock root. And then it has olive leaf as well as some grapefruit seed extract. So I like that one. It's pretty powerful. The amount of berberines that are in there are, are pretty high. So it can also help with viruses as well with the olive leaf and the high dose berberines. And the berberines will also help with any SIBO issues as well. So I like the balance of a product like that that has the SIBO overlay as well as enough of the herbs in there to affect and knock down parasites. Thanks so much for the, uh, for the feedback on that, Neil. So what else is cooking? So when I deal with a lot of patients that have gut issues, you know, changing the diet helps them with some of the gut symptoms. Sometimes changing the, the stomach acid and the HCL. Sometimes it's a combination of stomach acid, HCL, also cooking the food properly. And then the next element is knocking out infections. And the next element is knocking or adding in good beneficial bacteria. So sometimes we have to do a combination of all four or five of these things to really move the needle there. Uh, is it normal to see vegetable pieces in your stool? So it depends. If you have digestive issues and you may not have enough stomach acid or enzymes, you just may need more enzymes and acids, right? You may need to be chewing your food up good enough. If you have digestive issues already, you may need to be peeling the outer part of that food. If you're doing all those things and you're still seeing pieces, there could be a food allergy component. You may want to pull the food out for a month and add it back in. Just make sure you're maximizing your digestive support. You're chewing the food up well. And then um, you may want to look deeper at infections if there's still a problem. Uh, Thomas writes in, I can't, I can't shake this morning anxiety every day. What's going on? Um, thank you for what you do, by the way. Thank you very much, Thomas. In general, a couple things you can do. So like morning anxiety, make sure you have a good breakfast. I had some bulletproof coffee and collagen, about 20 grams of amino acids. I will have this in a little bit here. I got some bacon and I got two eggs um, poached. So I'm going to do that. Good protein, good fat. And then I'm going to just do two ashwagandha here right now. Ashwagandha is a phenomenal adaptogen and it's very helpful for anxiety as well. So big fan of that. Could be a blood sugar issue. Uh, is horse chestnut good for digestive health? Uh, great question, Sam. So in general, horse chestnut is typically used for vein health. People that have vein issues, women that have superficial veins showing it really helps with vein integrity, vascular integrity. Any special protocols you take for anyone with Crohn's? Well, the first thing is you really got to decrease the inflammation, right? Inflammation is going to be at the root. A lot of my patients that have Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or any type of IBD, irritable bowel disease, um, there's typically high amounts of calprotectin. And if you look at my podcast with Angie Alt talking about the autoimmune protocol, I mean, there's some great data, six to eight weeks, like significant reduction in inflammation in patients that had IBD significant. So of course the diet component and then getting digestive support going. And then a lot of times there's infections with these types of patients too. So we want to get to the root cause and get rid of these infections as well. Um, Gary writes in, what's your thoughts on CBD? I think CBD can be beneficial. You just want to make sure you're getting it from a high quality source because there's a lot of potential in, uh, contaminants in it, whether it's pesticides or the solutions they use to extract the CBD. So you want to make sure the quality is high and there's not a contamination there. Um, Lak Lakshmi writes in, my daughter is having lots of skin issues. <clears throat> her stools float and watching your videos, I started giving her digestive enzymes and a lot of people are responding. It's getting knocked to the top. Hold on. And, but when I started giving her HCL, it leads to diarrhea. Why? 
So it's hard to say. Um, she could have just a lot of inflammation in the gut, and the HCL is a little bit irritating. So the first thing is just get the diet 100% dialed in, and I would just work on really ratcheting up enzymes first, and then maybe just give her something gentle like some lemon lemon juice or some um, apple cider vinegar, and then titrate that up slowly. I would start there. Michael writes in, when I eat red meat, I get stomach pain and later vomit. Could be a food allergen. Does it happen with other types of meats? Are you taking enzymes or <clears throat> acids at all? I would look at just seeing if it's just an allergy issue, pull it out, and then add other enzymes and acids and to make sure you're breaking the foods down. Foods that you're not breaking down thoroughly can create more chance of food allergens because the undigested proteins are hanging out. They may slip into your bloodstream and create an immune response and then heighten that whole allergenic process. Vivek writes in, is systemic candidiasis a concern when you see candida overgrowth on a GI map? Do herbs treat systemic candidiasis like fluconazole? Yeah, a lot of the herbs can. I mean, like oil of oregano, silver, various berberines, you know, taking it at high dose can be helpful. Of course, the big thing with systemic candidiasis is stop feeding it. So if you're eating a whole bunch of refined sugar and junk, you got to work on the decreased feeding aspect. Sometimes it does better to actually eat a little bit more carbs while you're doing killing because it can kind of bait some of these critters, keep them out in the open, kind of like cheese on a mouse trap would. Hope that helps. Jack writes in, I tend to wake up one to three times while sleeping. How can I fix my sleep disturbances or any supplements I can take? So if you're waking up one to three times, but you have no problem going to sleep, I always think blood sugar issues. So you may want to put like a nice good protein or fat bar next to your uh, nightstand. Number two, you can have a little snack, protein, fat, a little bit of carbs before bed as well. You can also do a tablespoon of coconut oil, teaspoon of honey uh, before you go to sleep. It could be a blood sugar issue that is waking you up. Keep that in the back of your head. Okay, here, let me just keep on rolling down the list. Um, I've watched, uh, have you watched the Netflix documentary, Afflicted? Most patients have undiagnosed issues and are attempting to use functional medicine. Not watch that documentary yet. Is that the one on <clears throat> ketosis? Let me know. James writes in, happy Friday, Dr. J. I'm in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Is fried ice cream and fried dough good, good for my health? Uh, Probably not. Definitely not going to be um, the best thing. But if you have any gluten-free options, that's better. Any suggestion to detoxify after vacation is over so I can get back to normal. Well, number one, if you're consuming some bad foods, make sure you take enough acids and enzymes and make sure you also do some activated charcoal. That will help bind up a whole bunch of this stuff. And you can also take some probiotics at nighttime too because if you're eating a whole bunch of sugar, that may flare up some not-so-good bacteria. And at least some of that good probiotic can kind of help uh, balance some of it out. So that's how I'd handle that, James. Enjoy your vacation. <clears throat> All right, the Kaz writes in, um, your advice for chronic UTIs, I take D-mannose, high-dose vitamin C, oil of oregano, but it keeps coming back. Thanks. So UTIs tend to be caused by E. coli. So I would look at getting your gut treated and supported. I would look at work on getting good gut bacteria in there as well after you've done a good treatment. I would look at that as well. Um, IgA levels could be low, so getting the gut cleared out and supporting with good probiotics on the flip side will also help. Thoughts on sweet corn? I'm not not too familiar with that, but if it's like pulverized corn or whatever, then um, not so good. But if it's like corn on the cob, you mean it's it's not as bad than like you know corn flour, right? Because it's not quite as pulverized, and just make sure it's organic, good quality, no GMO. Oliver writes in. How to get the pressure off the nerve after a lower back injury? Well, if it's a disc issue, um, you want to see a good chiropractor that can help with um, some techniques to decompress. You want to also get the muscles turned on because the muscles tend to also decompress the joint naturally. Good soft tissue, either active release or myofascial release and some good chiropractic work. A lot of times they'll do SOT or they'll may even use like a decompression table or a decompression chair to help take that pressure off. Um, ever had issues with hydrolyzed collagen, giving arm rashes? Not necessarily. Just make sure the quality is good. In my line, the true collagen is super clean. It's We use proteolytic enzymes, and it comes from you know grass-fed, pasture-fed cows. So that's, that helps. Michael Bravo writes in, I have eosinophilia, gastroenteritis. I'm, I have, I'm in six-food elimination diet, but I'm also having issues with red meat. Might consider enzymes and HCL. Uh, I think I should have a consult with you, though. I mean, I would recommend it. I mean, you can just work on putting your foods, making them cooked a little bit more, make it easier on your tummy, everything peeled, mashed, um, de-seeded, put it in a crock pot or Instapot, and, and I would just be sipping broth throughout the day. Keep the food really easy to process. That way your gut doesn't have to go through a lot of work because if your gut's already inflamed, the last thing we want to do is give it more 
uh, more to do, right? We want it to focus on healing. We don't want to focus on digesting as much. We need nutrition. So I would do like things like ginger tea. I would sip on bone broth. I would put your food in a crock pot or an Insta pot and just keep the, you know, keep the meat to a, an amount that you can handle. If it's not much, that's fine. Um, some carrots in there, maybe some celery and a good broth. I would keep it really simple though. So you get good nutrition, you know, make my ginger tea as well. And you can Google that too. All right. Any other questions, guys, feel free and let me know. If not, I'm going to go bump over to a patient here in just a minute. Let me know y'all here. I'm going to get my supplements going here while you guys come up with another question for me. All right. All right. Anything else, guys? Let me know. James writes in, any suggestions for clogged acne cyst on my daughter's forehead or nose? Diet. Get out. Make sure the insulin's under control. Kids tend to drive up insulin because of refined carbohydrates and grains. The insulin then feeds the sebaceous glands to produce more oil. The bacteria on the skin then feeds on the oil. Voila, you got a cyst. So number one, get the insulin in check. Number two, the inflammatory foods. Grains are notorious for that. So clean up the diet. Um, that's going to be a really good help. I mean, of course, you can do some gentle cleansing with a sulfur-based soap and, you know, use a, a gentle toner on the skin to help you shift the pH. Um, but in general, you got to um, you got to clean up the diet. Sam writes in, afflicted is about a four, uh, four young men and women who suffer from Lyme disease, dystonia, and NNEMF sensitivity, all who are not able to function. Yeah, I mean, here's the deal, right? A lot of people that have serious Lyme issues or serious electromagnetic frequency it's like that's not the problem in a lot of ways, right? That's like a marker that their immune system and their body is becoming so sensitive and so sick that now those things are actually becoming a problem. So I see a lot of people that have been treated with chronic Lyme and they have gluten sensitivity, they have infections, they have adrenal fatigue, maybe blood sugar issues. Maybe they were on a, they were seeing an ILADS doc that had them on antibiotics for the last five years that wiped out their gut flora. Uh, it's amazing because I see a lot of these Lyme patients that are on these chronic antibiotic protocols and you just Google the side effects of the antibiotics and they kind of mirror a lot of what they're taking. And I know Tim Ferriss talks about this a lot as well. So I'm just, I'm concerned about people on these chronic long antibiotic protocols and you see a whole bunch of symptoms. So I, you know, my thing is they should always go through a, a functional medicine workup. You know, if you can't tolerate the EMF, you know, turn off your electricity box at night, turn off your wireless at night, do everything you can on that side of the front to help. And um, you can sleep on a grounding mat too, but you got to go through all the, the functional medicine principles, but good feedback. Uh, is FOS good for improving gut flora? I mean, yeah, it's very helpful. I mean, you can do inulin or guar gum. That can be helpful as long as it's not causing gas. You can also do some resistant starch or unripened banana flour. Uh, what's your take on vaccines? Um, well, that's a, a long topic. I don't like to get into it too in depth, but in general, if you look at the top 10 countries in health, you know, longevity, infant mortality, a lot of them are like, I think in Scandinavian countries, and they have 75% less vaccinations than we do in the US, and they start later. So I think that tells you a lot. Um, you don't ever get health through a needle. And then the question is, is the contaminants in the vaccinations uh, are they worth it? Um, are they clean? Those are the next things <clears throat> I would look at um, without going too into depth. Best herb to fight depression. Um, again, with herbs, I would look at St. John's wort or I would look at amino acids like 5-HTP and or tyrosine. How important are virulence factors in H. pylori testing relative to the count on the GI map? I mean, virulence factors for me, for H. pylori, this just tells us how strong the H. pylori is. The virulence factors kind of look at cytotoxic proteins that are being produced by the H. pylori. So, of course, that's going to make a big difference in, in how strong the H. pylori may be, but it doesn't change too much. Um, Chris Work from Chris Beat Cancer. Um, said meat causes cancer. Is that true? No, I, I don't think that's true. Right now, if you look at Chris's story, he had some type of colon cancer 15, 14 years ago. Now, when you have a cancer, especially of the gut, meat and proteins and fats are going to be one of the hardest foods to digest and to break down. So if someone has like some type of cancer like that um, and their digestion's a mess, Meat's a very hard food to break down. So cutting meat out maybe for a period of time or going more to a bone broth or going more to kind of liquid amino acids or soups, going more to vegetable juices, can that be helpful? Yes. The question is why is it helpful? Because it's really easy to digest and process. Now, again, if 
Chris, who got cancer originally, had a whole bunch of meat that was processed and had a whole bunch of antibiotics and pesticides in it. Um, yeah, that makes sense that that would be a contributing factor. But I mean, the problem with people that just talk about meat being bad, they want to lump meat all in the same category, right? I don't want to lump vegetables all in the same category. I don't want to put the soybeans drenched in Roundup and Monsanto's glyphosate in the same category as the broccoli organically grown in my backyard, right? So we won't do it to vegetables, but we'll demonize all meat and put it into one basket, so to speak. So I think we need to be specific about what we're talking about. We need to look at the quality and we need to understand there's a season for a reason. Someone that has chronic gut stress may benefit by pulling out a very hard to digest uh, food and or process it in a way to make it easier to digest. So I think there's some benefit there. Even Gerson, right? The Gerson still has a lot of vegetable juice with liver in it. Liver, okay, that's a superfood, but it is animal products. So they even get it. There's still a lot of nutrient density in these animal products. I uh, hope that helps. So again, it's got to look at the whole picture. Best way to reduce ferritin or iron, give blood. Okay, uh, quick way to have a bowel movement, high dose magnesium oxide or mag citrate. Individuals with darker skin be better suited to lower protein diets. Uh, maybe depends on your activity level, right? Is there any especially good probiotic that you can recommend? Well, in my line, we use Probioflor, which is a broad spectrum bifido and lactobacillus probiotic, which works great. Uh, Ronan writes that my partner has her thyroid taken out due to cancer. She has been taking thyroid medication for years. Now her TSH levels are through the roof. Uh, what do you think could be the issue? Um, it's probably autoimmunity going on, and see. Her thyroid's been taken out. So taking the thyroid out is like ripping a piece of gum off your foot. So they may not have gotten all of it, and that tissue can start to grow back and actually start making hormone again. That there may be that component there, and there's probably an unresolved autoimmune issue that's still lingering that may be attacking the thyroid and spilling out hormone. That could be it. Can SIBO be diagnosed with a stool test? Isn't reliability of breath tests uh, very high? In general, to officially diagnose SIBO, you're going to need a breath test because it's it's location specific. A gut test, stool test will tell you more dysbiosis, but it won't necessarily tell you where because all that stool is coming through the same piping, right? Breath test is more reliable reliability for the, speci the specificity of a SIBO diagnosis outside of some type of um, scope where they take an internal sample. So yes. What's the average dose of your HCL with patients to improve digestion? Anywhere between one and four. Most people sit around uh, two to three per meal, depending on the size. Hey, Marianne, hope you're doing well. Just got blood work. My TSH levels are at 0 0.10. What should I do? Well, it depends, right? Because in your situation, um, Marianne, if I remember correctly, I don't think you have a thyroid. I have to go back on my notes. So the more important number is going to be your T4 and your T3, your T3 numbers more in particular. So as long as your T3 numbers are in the top 50% to the top 25% of the reference range, I'm okay with that. Sam writes in, how's your baby doing? I have a toddler and will be there soon. Can you uh, do a soul podcast on toddler health? My baby's doing great. And I appreciate you asking, Sam. Uh, I mean, this morning he ate two pieces of pasture fed pork. He ate one full egg and then he had uh, a bunch of blackberries. And then we give him a little bit of green juice um, to top it off. So he's doing phenomenal. His health is very, very robust. He's in the top, I think, 80% regarding his height and weight. And he was born a month soon. Uh, a month premature because um, we had to do a C-section because my wife had a fibroid that the OBs would not allow her to um, do a vaginal birth on reluctantly. So he's in the top 20% of the reference range with height and weight, and he was born a month uh, soon. So we're really excited with his his growth and potential. And what do you think of low-dose immunotherapy? can be helpful for people that have chronic allergy issues as well. I think it's great. I'm doing your protocol for parasites. What do you recommend for a daily dosage of GI Clear 4? Two capsules three times a day, Danielle. Hope that helps. What's the most accurate test for female hormone levels that can be purchased independently? Uh, I would look at getting the Dutch complete panel. And if you need to get it, you can go to my site, justinhealth.com slash shop, and you can just uh, pick the Dutch complete one. If you're a cycling female, day 20 of your cycle is ideal. If you're menopausal, any day totally works. All right, guys, hope that helps. Got a whole bunch of questions there. I got a bunch of patients that I got to run to. Hope you guys have a fabulous Friday. Give me a share. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment down below. I'll try to start answering those here a little bit more frequently. Hope you all have a fabulous Friday and take care.